my poker stories is the fact that it's a giant sin to do it, and it's considered gezel. Gezel means it's considered theft. When you win po- when you win money with poker, it's considered like you stole the money from the other person. Why? Why? Yeah. Because the money you didn't make, you didn't earn the money in a legitimate way. But we're allowed to go. But it's for fun. But it's permission sometimes. through them too. Not so allowed to go to a casino ever. You can't play blackjack. At a not allowed to gamble. Judaism, according to Torah, you're not allowed to gamble. Allowed to but yeah, I heard nothing, it's not, not for, if, if it's your job, if you're doing it for work, you're not allowed, but for fun, you're allowed to go. Opposite. It's probably, yeah. the, no, it's not, not allowed but to go to casino. there's no casino. money involved. It's just for fun. Well, if it's just for fun, then it's just a game. It's the same thing as Monopoly. But if it's a, if you're playing with actual money, it's a giant sin, and going to casino by itself as a Jew is considered Chilul Hashem. Because the people that are not religious like I used to be, are looking for excuses not to be religious. So when they see a really religious person with black and white and a beard, like I used to see, unfortunately, yeah. playing on the same poker table that I'm playing at, I'm like, yeah, see? The whole religion is nonsense. I'm blaming the whole religion, not this guy that's making a sin. I'm thinking that this guy, this one little guy, represents the entire Judaism, like he's Moshe Rabbeinu. In reality, he's just making a sin, he's just one guy. Unfortunately, it's a very big sin. It's considered Chilul Hashem. And Chilul Hashem is something you can't fix in this world until you die. It's not something you want to do. Why is gambling not allowed? Why is it not allowed and what makes it gambling? Like if you, if you invest in stock stock market, does that gambling too, to an extent? It depends, it depends on how you invest in the stock market. If you're investing in a stock market where you are buying without any research whatsoever, you're, not, you're just picking any symbol, and you're buying it, and moments later you're selling it, without any rhyme or reason of what you're doing, then yes, you're 100% gambling. But if you're buying the, uh, the company, you're buying the stock of a company, and like you see a future. after you've researched the company, you understand the business, and in essence what you're doing is that you're investing into their business. You want to own a piece of their business. Obviously, you can't own the entire business of General Motors or Microsoft or Google. But you want to own a piece of their future. That's not gambling. That's just like investing in any other business. Just that you're buying a small piece. Gambling is pure statistics. It's pure chance. It's pure luck. Now, when you're betting against the, the house, you're betting against the casino, then you're disrespecting the panasad that Hashem gave you. And in essence, instead of using the money that He gave you as a tool to give tzedakah, you're using it for things that are bad. The second thing is, as far as when you're betting against, so people would say, okay, you know, so I'm not betting against the house. Hashem specifically states we're not allowed to gamble. But what about when I play against my friends, not in the casino, but I play in my house? Right? I'm not in a casino, so it's not Hebrew Hashem. You can't take money from your friends. Ever. Right. Even from your enemy, you can't take money. And they're, giving it, they're giving you the money with a heavy heart. Like, they don't want to give it to you. Right. So you're, causing, you're causing another person's sorrow. Which means that even if you're playing a house game and each guy put 50 bucks on the table, and at the end, the guy that wins the Texas Hold'em tournament gets all of the money, it's considered like you stole the money from each one of them. And just so you know, for stealing, it's a very, very deep punishment. I'm not going to go into all of the details of it, but in essence, what it means is that somebody that stole money... If they don't do tshuva during their lifetime, they have to come back to this world. They have to go into a gigul. They have to reincarnate. They cannot go into Ganon being a thief. No thieves allowed in, in Gan Eden. So, so if you were going to bet on a Super Bowl, but you did, like I, I was going to, but I didn't. Good. So, you didn't get it. It's not a sin. First time, first, time, first time that you're about to make a sin, but you don't, Hashem doesn't count it as a sin. Second time, you're about to make it, and... In essence, you try to do it, but it just doesn't succeed. It does consider it is considered a sin. But the beauty of this world and the beauty of Hashem's mercy is that you can do tshuva. You realize, okay, Hashem, I didn't know that this is such a big of a sin. Pray to Hashem, and Hashem loves you even more for it. Is it auctioning like you know how we auction like uh, brachas and stuff? You're selling something. That's not it's not gambling. Gambling is in essence you're putting money at risk. You're putting money at risk without any rhyme or reason other than desire. There's really no rhyme or reason of why you're doing it because the statistics are against you. When you're investing into a business, 
more chances than not that you're going to make money because the business does something. When you're investing into a stock, it's the same thing. When you're investing into a, uh, you know, a product, you're getting something in return. And more chances than not, you're going to succeed in this investment. When you're investing into a casino, when you're doing something with a casino, the statistics are so far against you that only a small 3 or 4% of all gamblers in history have ever been successful. Yeah. Is it true that you're not allowed to invest, invest in a company that works on Shabbat, that, that sells and stuff on Shabbat? Uh, it depends. It depends. If it depends if, it's, if the company is only owned by Jews and, they're, and they are uh, specifically operate on Shabbat, then it can become a problem. But in reality, in the world we live in today, uh, it's, uh, you know, no public company is only owned by anyone. It's owned by a bunch of people. And uh, to uh, limit companies that don't work on Shabbat would pretty much make the entire stock market not available to all Jews, which is not possible. So, uh, you know, for better or for worse, it's, it's allowed to invest in companies that work on Shabbat, but the way that they justify it based on al is that the Goim are the ones that are working on Shabbat and not the Jews, even though that may, may or may not be the case. Uh, so you said that we can't blindly invest in stocks, but... We, if we study that and research about that specific stock, we can invest in it. So sure. why can't let, let? So I understand that you can't blindly go sit on a blackjack table and play, play the game. But mm-hmm. if you read, study well, the game and you can count that, cards. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. So why count can't cards? You, you count cards because you, you're cheating. It's not the rules of the game. So that's already an additional sin you added to the list. Count cards, you're cheating. If the casino knew that you're counting cards, they wouldn't let you play, right? Yeah. So it's considered cheating. So now you just added another sin. So the way to win is to cheat. Now, okay, so that's why I said any table games, roulette, table, all that stuff, you could throw it in the garbage. There's no chance in the world you could ever justify it. The one thing that people thought they could justify is playing against people, playing poker. Because they're not playing against the house. But like I told you, anytime you win with poker... You're, it's considered like you stole the money from the other person. What if it's going on the table? Is that now still, to steal from going. It's even worse. Chilu Hashem. What if they don't know you're Jewish? You're not wearing a kippah. You're just there with the hat or whatever. If they don't know that you're Jewish, okay, then you're still stealing from them. So it's not Chilu Hashem, but it's just stealing from them. How about like a lotto ticket? Lotto ticket, according to Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, you're allowed to buy one lotto ticket, the minimum amount. One dollar. Uh, and how long? A year? Or? No, if, if there's a lotto, you buy a lotto. It's, it's considered an insignificant amount of money for you or anyone. So it's considered one dollar. I think they even capped it at two dollars because there's one ticket that's two dollars. But you can't buy any of these cars that are five dollars and ten dollars. And how people get these addictions where they buy these cards and spend a hundred dollars a day on these uh, crazy cards. Can't do any of that stuff. You could buy a single lotto ticket uh, because it's considered that even if you lost the money. It wouldn't necessarily uh, change anything. But again, it's a, uh, you have to be very, very careful with gambling because it's just not worth it.